Hello, how's it going? Today, we're looking at the origins of the Lich King, Ice Crown, and the Frozen Throne. This is still pre-World of Warcraft in terms of timeline though, so this isn't about the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Also, less jokes in this one, as I think the story's brilliant anyway. But with that out of the way, let's go! The Horde's defeat in the Second War meant that the Legion's plans to conquer Azeroth were screwed, again. But the demons weren't going to give up. Kil'jaeden had actually learned a pretty valuable lesson from the Horde's defeat. They'd failed because the Horde were crap. Nah, I'm kidding. It was internal conflict and disloyalty that caused their downfall. This is not a mistake the Legion would make again. Kil'jaeden had a plan. During Draenor's destruction, Nazul and his followers had managed to escape into the Twisting Nether. The Legion were waiting for them there. Kil'jaeden's minions tortured Nazul. His body was torn apart bit by bit, but his spirit was kept alive, intact, and completely aware of what was happening. A group of Dreadlords, Tychondrius, Balnazar, Deathrock, Malganis, and Varamathras, took turns subjecting Nazul to horrific agony. The Orc begged for death, and Kil'jaeden agreed to grant it to him, but only in return for his absolute servitude as the Legion's new weapon. Nazul's sanity was a little bit broken by this point, so he accepted Kil'jaeden's terms. Kil'jaeden passed Nazul's spirit through death and revived him as a spectral entity. The Orc's consciousness expanded, granting him psychic powers. The Dreadlords bound his spirit to a special set of armor and a mighty runeblade called Frostmourne. These items, as well as Nazul's bound spirit, were imprisoned inside a diamond-hard block of ice. Kil'jaeden promised the Orc that if he proved his loyalty, he would be allowed to roam free in a new body. His armor would mark him as a king, and he'd rule Azeroth. However, if he disobeyed, his spirit would be tormented forever. The Demon Lord had no desire or need to make good on his promise. However, he believed the lie would motivate the Orc more than basically just threatening him with more violence. Nazul's followers were transformed as well. Their bodies were torn apart and reshaped into undead liches. Nazul's previous life was over. He was now the Lich King, and his would be an existence of unending servitude and indescribable power. Cool beans. Kil'jaeden, pleased that his work was done, explained his plan to his new minion. The Lich King would conjure a death plague that would take care of all resistance on Azeroth. The living would die and be reborn as undead soldiers, weakening Azeroth's defences in preparation for a demonic invasion. Kil'jaeden had no interest in trusting his minions, or hanging out with them, so he sent the Dreadlords that had tormented Nazul with the Lich King to Azeroth instead. They'd hasten the Lich King's tasks by any means necessary, so the Legion opened a portal from the Twisting Nether to Azeroth, and the Lich King's icy cask smashed into an isolated part of Ice Crown Glacier in Northrend. The big block of ice imprisoning the Lich King had been warped by the descent, and now resembled a throne. The Dreadlords arrived soon after, and began to construct fortifications around this frozen throne. As they did their work, the Lich King started his. His expanded consciousness reached out across Azeroth and darkened the thoughts of the native inhabitants, afflicting them with horrible nightmares. First, the Wendigo and Ice Trolls. These guys came across slumbering Vrykul and slew them in their sleep, and then raised them as undead Vrykul. Through the Vrykul, the Lich King learned of the Valkyr. He decided he wanted to make some of his own, but this task proved quite difficult, even for him. After several attempts, he succeeded and enhanced his abilities further. Next, the Lich King created an early strain of his Plague of Undeath. There was a human settlement on the fringes of Dragonblight. The Lich King sent the plague to the village with his will. Three days passed, and everyone in the settlement had died, and then come back as undead minions. The Lich King could feel the thoughts of these minions as if they were his own. He felt himself ascending higher and higher in power. The more minds he controlled, the mightier he became. The Dreadlords completed building their fortifications around the Frozen Throne. This impenetrable fortress would be called Ice Crown Citadel, and would be the Lich King's base of operations. Kil'jaeden was extremely pleased with how things were going. He ordered the Lich King to continue amassing power and control over the region. Once Northrend was fully controlled by the Lich King, they could focus on the rest of Azeroth. But definitely Eastern Kingdoms first. They'd fall pretty quickly against the Plague, and then the Legion could use the Eastern Kingdoms as a staging point. The Lich King nodded in agreement with Kil'jaeden's plan. It seemed sound, but he wasn't exactly a huge fan of the Demon Lord. He was only playing the part of loyal servant, but in actual fact was pretty intent on making Kil'jaeden pay for what he'd done to him. Plus he knew the promise that Kil'jaeden had made was a lie. The main obstacle in his way of breaking away from the Legion's control were the Dreadlords. They watched everything he did for any sign of disobedience. He masked his power in front of them, making them believe they were in full control, whilst he sat and observed them back, learning each of their individual strengths and weaknesses. And we're leaving it there! That was probably one of the most serious videos I've done. Apologies if you were hoping for more jokes, but I just really like this part of the lore. Obviously Wednesday and Friday's video are going to be continuing Chronicle Volume 1, but next Monday I'll be talking about the Fragmented Horde and a War Chief in Exile. So if you want to see those videos, make sure you're subscribed! If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, talk to me in the comments, and all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!